Hey gaming fans, so today I'm going to be showing you how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, the trading card game on Dueling Book. Uh, essentially be able to play online with other players. Um, I do I do show videos where I do play this game and uh, a couple of people have asked me uh, what it is, uh, you know, what the software is and, and how do you use it and stuff. So I thought, let's do a little bit of a run through just to kind of talk about it. So. Uh, first thing you gotta do is you gotta go to duelingbook.com uh, then the page will load up anyways when you get to this stage where it says dueling book um, normally if you haven't logged in yet it'll be there will be a login screen where you create a new profile it's easy to do you just you just need an email address and then you just create your profile and uh, then once you've logged in you hit duel then it goes to connecting screen and uh, so this is your main menu area this is just kind of like a chat that's going on, um, you know, just uh, what people are saying. And then you got options over here. So you have the duel room. Uh, so that's where you would go to duel once you have a deck. You have your deck constructor, profile viewer if you want to look at your profile, or if you need to create it, uh, you can go and create your pro profile. Um, then you, there's your profile that you actually do get to create. Uh, you can change it around what you want to do with it. The more important area here is your deck constructor because that's what you're going to use to build your deck. But there is some other options in here. Uh, rankings, if you want to play ranked duels. And then you got some different setting options. A lot of people don't realize that you can go further than this first menu piece here because it says exit there. Uh, and you don't always notice that there's a scroll bar here. So this there's actually a lot more stuff going on. Um, so you can do friend requests. You can actually, um, you know, friend people. So when you're looking for a duel, you can know if, if that person, if you've played them before, if they're a friend of yours. And then you can block some people if you need to. Uh, duel records is cool because this will actually open up a window uh, and allow you to view previous duels that you've done. And that's what I use when I do my recording. So at the top here, we're going to go into, if it's your first time doing this, you're going to go into Deck Constructor. And this is a fairly simple uh, window to understand. I like building decks in this because it's pretty easy and straightforward. Um, you have your import deck, where if you've saved decks in the past, you can import them or export them. Um, you can set your deck as a default, so that when you want to go and play, you can just set this deck as a default deck. So every time you go to play a duel, it's always going to use this deck or it's going to default to this deck. Then you got your deck list here. Uh, I've kind of arranged it by my GOAT format decks and then other decks that I was building, you know, speed duels and stuff like that. So uh, it's, you know, up to you on how you want to do that, uh, just so you know what deck you're playing. Um, you can do, you could build a new deck or you can actually just take a deck that's existing, modify it, and then save the deck as a new deck, or you could just modify the deck you have. So if we're going to create a new deck, we're going to create, say, test. I'll just let's put one together here. So you start off with your blanks uh, slate here. You got your side deck. You got your extra deck. So then uh, you can search for cards. It's pretty easy. You, you just put in a card name, um, like dust. I can put in there, and then I can find it in the list here. It says one of three. Uh, you can scroll through the list. Say so. If I want a dust tornado. Uh, I just found it right there, and then I just grab it with the mouse and hold the right key down. Um, sorry, the left uh, mouse click button, and then just drag it to where you want. And you, you can move it around. So I could put in three dust tornadoes, and I can add in, say, this card, and I can move it around. So it's pretty cool. You can organize your deck that way. Uh, I typically like to do monsters and then spells and then traps, however you want to do it. But you just grab your whichever monsters you want. Now you can uh, refine your search to monsters, spells, and traps. This is good because if you're looking for a card that you don't know exists, uh, you know you can just narrow down your search if you're looking for a specific type of monster that's going to fit your deck. So say you want an aqua monster, you could put in I want an aqua monster it will show only aqua monsters when you actually do search it. Um, obviously you're going to get a huge ton of pages that will have aqua monsters, so every aqua monster is going to be there. So then you can change it to I want only effect monsters, and I only want, uh, so let's say, 
Gemini monsters, and then it will refine your search even more. So a really easy way to build decks with this. Then we also have, uh, well you can put in levels as well, so you can search by level, uh, so like say from 1 to 4, and then refine your search again. So it really depends on how you want to build your deck, what you're looking for. Then you got the you more options up here, where you can actually change your card pool. Well, this is cool because if you want to play only GOAT format, you can just click on that and then go to GOAT format cards. And this will only show you GOAT format legal cards. And there we go. All these cards that show up are legal in GOAT format. Now you have to remember too, if you're playing GOAT format, it's not going to tell you in here which cards are legal uh, for play. So you have to know the ban list. You have to know you don't put in uh, too many of the of a card that's not allowed in GOAT format. Um, and the other thing is, it'll think certain cards are banned or, or limited to one, and so you have to hit bypass limit down here, so that you can actually put you know the three copies of a banned card uh, or illegal card or whatever. So if I went to ring, for instance, let's clear that ring. If I went to Ring of Destruction, I could put in one, two, three, um, even though in uh, GOAT format you're only allowed one. So you have to be careful that you don't um, put too many of the wrong card in, or else it won't let you duel in GOAT format. As you can see, this one here is, it says it's banned because it's got this little symbol. It's banned in TCG, regular format, modern format, but it's not banned in uh, GOAT. So that's just an easy way to, you know, build your deck. Uh, you've got lots of options to go through. Then once you're done, you would save your deck, and then when you're ready to uh, play, you can go into the duel room, and here's where you have to decide what you're going to play. So I have my default deck here. It's my Grand Maju Goat deck. I have that set as default, but you can override it and say I want to play my Skill Drain deck. And then you have an option here. Do you want to duel? Uh, do you want to play somebody? Or do you want to watch a duel? So if you click on that, you can uh, you can go into wherever you want and actually watch other people play. So this is a good way to actually you know uh, learn how people's decks are. So I can go into here, and then they're going to be playing their duel. And then I can just watch. Now when you're watching, you can't really interact with the two people that are playing. But there is public chat and there's a, you know, online users piece and a private chat. So uh, those features do work, but um, you can't just go and start talking to these people because they're in the middle of dueling. So they're just not going to allow you. Uh, what's cool about this too is uh, you can actually see stuff that's public knowledge. So uh, once cards start going into the graveyard, you can open up the graveyard and see what's in there. Just in case you come into the duel a little bit later on, you can now actually see what's in there. Uh, you can't see face down cards, obviously, or anything like that, just only stuff that's public knowledge. Anyways, let's get out. So we're going to go to Duel. And much like on the other, on the deck building, you could filter, so if there's a person you're looking for, a certain player, a friend maybe, you can find them. You can refine your searches that way. You can go to host a duel, so uh, this is if you want to host the duel yourself. If you don't want to host a duel, you can just say, look for somebody who is dueling and uh, asking for a duel. Uh, so right now I'm, I've moved over, you've got these little tabs here that move it over to the different formats. So you can see here, there's rush duels, speed duels, un unlimited, rated, unrated. Uh, traditional, unrated, so those are all the different formats. There's GOAT. Uh, so right now nobody's um, nobody's in the GOAT format yet wanting to duel, but you can see that here in the, say, uh, I guess custom cards. All these people are looking for a duel. You select your deck that's appropriate for that format, and then you would click on their name, and it'll say, um, it'll say it's waiting for them to approve. If they approve, then you'll go into the game and you can start playing. So just to give you a little bit of, a, of how, how to actually play when you get into a duel, I'm going to do a hosted duel, but I'm going to do it uh, solo mode. So it'll just be me. And uh, it's going to be my goat, so I'm going to host duel. 
So now I'm in solo mode. Uh, so this is a good way to test out your deck if you want to. Um, so the basic uh, way of playing here is when you mouse over a card, it'll give you all these options so you can reveal it, show it to your player, declare the card, uh, put it to your spell and trap zone, uh, put it to the bottom of the deck, to the top of the deck, banish it to the graveyard, and, and other and set. So if I want to set this card, I'd hit set, you choose where you want to set it, and there you go. And now the card is there, and you can do whatever you want with it at this point. So you can banish it, or you can um, check your banish pile, you can put it back, you can put it to the grave, you can put it back to your hand. So you got a lot of options there. You also have your deck options. So you have view, so you can, if you need to view your deck, say you play Sangen and now you get to search for a monster, you would click on the deck and hit view, and now you go through and you find your card you want, say Morphing Jar. I could add that to my hand, and there we go. Or if it's supposed to go right to the graveyard, it sends it to the graveyard. Then we also have our uh, area here where it tells us the, the duel that's happening, so it's it, the phases that it's happening. So you can click on standby. Now this is all manual, so you have to manually click it. So you have to say I'm on the standby phase now. Um, I'm going to summon my Banisher of the Light. Then I'm going to go to main phase two. Um, maybe I'll play uh, my Premature Burial. Now Premature Burial costs you 800 life points. So that's where this comes in, where you actually have to put in the, the number. And this is your minus sign. That's your plus sign. So I'm going to pay 800 life points, and then hit enter. You'll see my life points just lowered down here to 7,200. My opponent's still at 8,000. Then we go into the battle phase, and we got options here. So we can attack directly. Um, so if my opponent had a, no monsters there, I'd attack directly. Otherwise, I'd have to declare an attack. If I wanted to use his effect, I could say I'm going to declare his effect, and there you go. But if I want to attack, I do this, and there you go. And when you're done your attacks, you go to main phase two. So the other thing that there is, is there's little options here. There's there's a die, so if a card requires a dice roll, you just click on that, and there's your die. I rolled a three, and it tells you over here what the roll is, just in case you forget. And you can also flip a coin. Lots of cards have coin flips, and these are your, your tokens, of what they uh, they show a scapegoat. So you click on that, and then you can pop a token in there. You can change it to attack mode if you need to, uh, or to defense. Or you can change control, just like a, a monster, in case uh, your opponent has, um, you know, or you place preacher swap or something like that. So if you're going to play scapegoat, you would just pop the tokens out. And then we would end our turn, and then it would be our opponent's turn, and so on. So that's just a basic rundown of how this uh, dueling book works. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's lots of uh, help on it, and uh, you can read up on a lot of the, uh, the forums and stuff. But uh, I would suggest you would, uh, you know, try try slowly. Maybe try and find a friend that you know that actually likes Yu-Gi-Oh that you can connect with first before you try playing with strangers because some people are a little bit impatient on this on this software. Um, oh yeah, there was two other things I could show you here. There's the shuffle, which will actually shuffle your hand. And then there's the, sh the uh, show your hand option. And if you want to shuffle your deck, you just push shuffle there. Uh, the other thing is auto draw. This is actually uh, used if you don't want to automatically draw a card for the next turn. Say you play Reckless Greed, which says you skip your next two draw phases. You would uncheck that so that when you end your turn, it won't automatically draw you a card. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's my quick rundown of this software. It's fairly easy once you start getting used to it. I suggest just come in and play around with it for a bit. Once you get to know it, um, you know, once you start feeling comfortable, then you can start doing a couple of duels and, you know, it takes a little bit of time. Usually what I would do is, is I would tell them that I'm new to this, you know, in the chat room saying, I am new, so they don't get so impatient. Anyways, hope you like this tutorial. I just thought it would be fr easy for people to uh, 
uh, see exactly how this thing works so they can actually try and play Yu-Gi-Oh! online. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.